That's a shot there of uh, Lika Peach uh, Molly from Minerva Bath. Uh, lovely stretch of water down there at Bath. Club founded originally by a guy called Arnie Cook, who was a world champion sculler back in the 1970s and early, early 1970s. So no surprise that actually uh, they have a fine tradition of sculling there. I think this is Andrea Stock from Poplar, who was going to be the first off in the senior single skulls, but if she was late on parade, then they'll start her right at the end. So we're coming now towards the end of the time trials. Just two more events to time trial, the senior quadruple skulls and the academic eights. You may see in the background as you look at the skullers time trialling that there's been some eights warming up. But we first off move to the senior quadruple skulls. Just see the first of the senior quadruple skulls, the four young ladies from Grosvenor Rowing Club in Chester, just waiting patiently at the start. Obviously quadruple skulls go significantly faster than uh, single skullers, even senior single skullers. So the starters and officials will be very keen to make sure that the course is clear before they set off these quadruple scholars. There are 16 spaces uh, for racing for the quadruple skulls and there's actually due to be 16 quad skulls out in the time trial. I think we may find one of them has scratched. I have a little note here that we may not see the quad from Exeter University. And indeed the Exeter University I have, have withdrawn. So there are 16 quadruple skulls sculling over on a time trial. Why are we doing that? The reason being is we're obviously, as I mentioned earlier, very keen to have the fastest two crews in the final. So based on the times this afternoon uh, will enable us, uh, the times this morning will enable us to seed the crews for the draw uh, for when we get to the racing proper. So that the fastest quad this morning will race against the slowest quad this morning and so on. Uh, they'll be racing this afternoon from half past four and so that actually as we move through tomorrow and then they race twice on Sunday, hopefully we will have the fastest two quads in the final. You'll notice when these quadruple skulls get going, it's most beautiful and elegant and fast boat and the rate will be significantly higher, I suspect, than we see in the single scullers. Great Britain's men uh, have been doing very well in uh, world level in quadruple skulls, but sadly one of the boats that Great Britain failed to qualify for the Olympics in Rio this year was the women's quadruple skulls who failed at the Olympic qualifying regatta their last chance a few weeks ago by under a second, which is sad because back in 2006 when the World Championships were here in Great Britain, 
Uh, although technically Great Britain came second, the people that beat them from Russia were subsequently disqualified uh, for a drug offence, and so Great Britain won the gold medal. And of course, who can forget the same day as Steve Redgrave won his fifth gold medal in Sydney, we won our first quadruple skulls gold medal in the women's quads. So there we are, we're underway. That's uh, Grosvenor from Chester heading off down Temple Island. Remember these quadruple skulls sculling at 43, which is the highest I've clocked this morning. Um, basically sculling for places in the draw. conditions improving all the time today. They weren't bad when we started, but they're actually getting better and better and better. Okay, we now have uh, a composite crew from Dublin, Dublin University Ladies Boat Club in Ireland and Loyola Mar Marymount University in America. So, interesting to know how they got together. And they're still sculling at 39 as they pass the end of Temple Island, the top of the island, and reach Temple Island Meadows. There's the Grosvenor Quad now settled into their rhythm. Just try and clock their rate quickly. Yes, they're still doing 36s as the they pass the fully the Temple Island Meadows. Meantime, down at the start, Falcon Rowing Club, one of the long established rowing clubs based at Oxford on the upper reaches of the Thames. They're just downstream from all the college boat clubs. They have a really nice stretch of water to row on, but obviously very busy during term time. But Falcon, one of the oldest clubs on the upper Thames. But that's the uh, Dublin Loy Ola composite, sculling along strongly at 35s. It's quite intimidating sculling in between the booms, uh, but in fact, uh, the racing lanes, uh, international racing lanes, have to between, be between 9 and 16 metres wide, and the ones here. The course is 30 metres wide here at Henley. It's just that when you're rowing inside wooden booms, it doesn't feel like it. Well, I was expecting to see Birmingham University, but that looks suspiciously to me like the Agecoff quadruple skull that's just setting off there. We'll see in a minute, see whether the next one up is Agecroft or not. They have very similar colours. That's the Falcon Quad. Just about a third of the way over their time trial. Passing from Temple Island Meadows and reaching the Copus Office buildings. I think that was H. Croc, because this is the Tideway Scholar School. Uh, rowing in a composite with Bournemouth University. You can spot the Bournemouth University uh, lady, Jessica Belcher. Uh, she's rowing in the Bournemouth University colours. Uh, it's Birmingham University. They sneaked past uh, on the start when we weren't looking, uh, but they're looking resplendent. So uh, that was Age Croft that I had trouble identifying because Birmingham University just in front of them. There are four quadruple skulls here from Reading University. That sounds an extraordinary number until we remember that the Great Britain Rowing Start Programme, which is when uh, promising athletes are identified and whilst they're studying at university, they're part of the Great Britain Start Programme and highly qualified coaches and intensive training. And uh, Reading University is one of the major 
rowing start centres in the country um, and so it's no surprise that all their athletes are here rowing in quads. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to be able to identify uh, Reading University A, B, C and D because as the cameras pan up and down the course I'm entirely confident I'll get it wrong. No problems identifying the Tideway Scholars Bournemouth quad. Let's stay past Temple Island Meadow. Let me see if I can clock their rate. Indeed, they're sculling strongly at 35. Nice controlled start there from Reading University. One wonders why they're not doing racing starts. The answer is very simple. The point at which they get told to start sculling is some 50 metres below where the timing team are. So they have half a dozen strokes to get up to race pace on these time trials. And, and Reading sensibly uh, many different approaches. Some do racing starts like they will when they're off the state boats. Other crews do what Reading did there and do what we call a build-up start where they start at a lower rate and over half a dozen or so strokes build up to race pace. Um, and uh, I'm sure if you sit coaches down you will get no agreement at all as to which is the most effective way of reaching race pace quickly. My own experience is that it depends on the crew. Some crews uh, benefit from a wind-up start as we call it and some crews benefit from a racing start but this afternoon you'll find off the state boats everybody will do a racing start one of the Reading University quads there as we would expect as these are potential international athletes sculling very strongly and neatly together and then there's Durham That's at Nottingham Rowing Club uh, setting off. <laughs> Nottingham uh, Rowing Club settled into a nice 35 strokes a minute, got a nice rhythm going there. Water not quite as flat calm as it was earlier, but still very good conditions here for rowing with not a huge breeze. Good shot there of the four young ladies from Weybridge just getting organised, just being called to order. Now they've been invited to start. Weybridge Rowing Club, you can guess where that is, a beautiful part of the River Thames down near Shepperton Lock and uh, down towards the Walton and Weybridge stretch. Several rowing clubs on that stretch and it's a, it's a lovely stretch of river to uh, row on. Beautiful view there of the first half of the course. 
right hand side crews going down the warm up lanes and the left hand side the racing crews. Edinburgh University just setting off there from the start. Very tense time uh, the start of the race. 41 strokes a minute. Absolute concentration from the uh, athletes there. Rate now down to 40 as they move up to race pace. Try and settle down to some sort of a rhythm and they're now at 38 as they reach the end of the island and just that initial sprint tension easing out of the bodies as they set into a nice loose rhythm sculling along at 36s. 37s, almost got that right.